Goal setting made simple. Good goal setting versus bad goal setting is the discussion for today. In order to get what we want in life, we first need to know what that is. How can you fulfill your potential if you don't know who you are or what makes you happy, what you exactly want in life? This is why goal setting is such a crucial skill that everyone should spend more time learning. If you don't know what your goals are, then life becomes a little like going on a journey with no destination. Even if you might enjoy the journey, you're still going to end up risk being somewhere you don't want to be and certainly won't take the most efficient route to get there. So you have to ask yourself what you really want from life and then go and get it. Goal setting is anything but easy. It is very much a skill itself. The problem is that not many people realize this and they never think to assess the quality of the goal themselves. Most people just want to wing it, don't want to write things down and get specific with exactly with what they want. They'll blame their motivation, their circumstances or even other people. But rarely do they assess whether the fault might lie with their goals specifically itself. So what makes a great goal versus a bad goal? We must discover how to formulate goals and targets so that you can actually stand a good chance of completing them. Then you might realize why life hasn't turned out quite the way you want. So let's first discuss bad goal setting. To understand how to write a good goal, it's first appropriate to look at what a bad goal may be and why it is that some goals just don't work the way they should. What should we do differently to avoid this happening the next time? Let's imagine for a moment you want to get in shape, as that is a typical goal for most people, losing weight, building muscle. So typically, a goal might include you writing down your ideal body weight, your measurements you want to reach, and you'll give yourself a target of you know, three months, six months, or one year, and then you attack. But this is a goal that is destined for failure because it is far too vague, far too distant, and far out of your control. Let's fast forward two weeks and say you've been, you know, working hard, you change your diet, but then suddenly life gets in the way, and you can't work out today, you don't have the energy today, tomorrow's going to be busy for you, uh, next week is looking really tight, and then you keep on pushing it off until you know you're you're getting way off your goal here. So you have plenty of time to reach your goal though, as you gave yourself the three months, six months, or whatever. And you'll just say, "I'm gonna make up for it tomorrow. I'm gonna make up for it next week," and you keep pushing it forward. And then as time goes on, you. Your, your time limit has come up, you've, you've pushed off all these days or whatever, and you go to look at your results, and you're still the same weight, you haven't built any muscle, and you just, you give up now, it's, you don't want to like, you don't have no motivation to go and start it again, and to get back into it, because you saw no differences in what you did, so you blame the goal, or what you're doing, and you give up. You don't do it again. Why would you do it? You know, you might as well enjoy your life instead of, you know, doing these ridiculous goals that don't work for yourself. So the vagueness is the main reason why a goal could not be good. So let's discuss on the contrary, a good goal. So let's imagine the same scenario, but you write the goal correctly. And so what would that look like? For instance, you, sh you should remove the time element and instead of aiming to accomplish something in so many amount of days, you should aim to do something every single day. So look at the goal that you want to accomplish and then break it down into smaller steps. In order to lose weight, you need to eat 2,000 calories or less You don't need you, you, and you need to work out three times a week. If you can do that, then you'll eventually notice changes be they small or big. So instead of focusing on the end goal, 
set yourself a short-term goal. This is something that is entirely within your control, meaning that you cannot fail for reasons outside your control. It is also completely resistant to being put off or delayed. You can't work out today, tomorrow. Likewise, a slow metabolism isn't going to prevent you from eating only 2,000 calories a day. A technique you can use in order to make sure you stick to these kind of goals is called the chain. The idea is you build up a chain to complete your daily targets and then this creates pressure not to break the chain. So you write down each day what are your daily goals. So 2,000 calories, you write down you know, what you're specifically going to eat so you don't go over those calories and then you, you check mark it off for the day. And you know, and then for your week, it's three, three workouts a week, you check mark it off and whatever your daily things are to keep you in line and then eventually seeing these these daily uh habits that you're doing these daily patterns you will you, you'll see how much progress you're doing and you'll see that like this is my daily like routine that I have to do and eventually when you're doing it like each day for a week or two weeks or three weeks you'll never want to miss that day you'll never want to you know not have that check mark of what you needed to do today you won't want to break the chain so the point is, is you should write your goals that are immediate and simple. And this is how you're going to start to actually see progress to your big overall goal in general. So break it down into small, simple steps, daily steps, something that you can 100% do each day. And that's how you're going to make massive amounts of progress. And that's how it always is. You know, take looking things in a, in a smaller scale in smaller steps is how you start to you know get things done instead of when you look at it a big goal you know you're dissatisfied if you don't accomplish that massive goal so in this way you're always feeling accomplished and that that you're progressing because you're you're, you're doing something even if it's small you'll feel really great about doing that so that's a good goal versus a bad goal be specific be um you know make it smaller goals so you actually get stuff done and progress and then you'll keep on adding things and you'll keep on you know ma um making that list longer making that chain longer and you'll be banging out so many different uh habits and patterns that eventually you'll be you'll be a machine just just knocking them out no problem so that's today's uh lesson if you will tomorrow we're going to talk about ambitious goals and you know goal setting made simple there so look out for that video like this video comment below what you think subscribe to the channel check out my free resource guide in the description below we'll see you guys tomorrow